Okay, hi there. Welcome to the, the second in a little suite of three videos looking at the economics of an import tariff. An updated video on how imports impact on demand and supply in a particular sector. When you're building up the analysis of a tariff, sometimes you'll be given a specific country or product to talk about. If not, choose an industry, which could in theory operate as a, a closed sector with no trade. Then you think about how trade... Uh, can impact on domestic demand and supply when when a country allows goods to come in without a tariff. And then you can build up an analysis of what happens when an import tariff is applied to imported products by a national government. The best levels of analysis always, always include some sort of comment on economic efficiency and welfare. So we'll certainly talk about that in this video. I'm going to take an example of a tariff introduced by the Cambodian economy. Uh, Cambodia is a, an emerging economy. In 2018, it was the number 109 economy in the world in terms of GDP, uh, but now breaking into the top 75 in terms of exports. Uh, not, not a great deal of economic complexity, but uh, significant export potential in things like textiles, as you can see here. Uh, knit, knit sweaters and suits and things, uh, leather, textile, footwear, etc., making trunks and cases. Uh, their exports typically go, the biggest trade partners, the United States, followed by Germany and then Japan and China. These are the products that Cambodia imports. They do import some fabric, clearly. Uh, they import uh, lots of things, flavoured water. They import uh, rice and other things. And you can see that the imports are dominated by Thailand. Nearly a third of their imports come from Thailand, from China and from Singapore. Now, Cambodia applies an import tariff of between 0 and 35%. Um, typically, farm output is, is imported. The tariff is 35%. They don't tax things like agricultural equipment, school materials, pharmaceutical products. You can probably explain why. And Cambodia charges a flat 10% value added tax on all imported goods. So it's a good example of a country which is imposing import tariffs. So we're going to go through in this video, we're going to build up slide by slide, uh, step by step, an analysis of how an import tariff on, for the sake of argument, imported rice coming into Cambodia is going to work. Let's go through it. Really important exam hint in a tariff diagram, please make your diagram industry specific make it really clear don't just put price and quantity on the on the y and x axis make it really clear what it is you're talking about in this case we're talking about a, a tariff on rice affecting the cambodian rice market there's the cambodian domestic supply curve and effectively what they can supply at a given price in the market there's cambodian domestic demand which presumably comes from both households and industrial users of rice and in the absence of trade the equilibrium price for the domestic market would be at price P1 and output Q1. Now, if we then allow rice to come in at a cheaper world supply price, perhaps other countries, including Thailand, perhaps can supply rice more cheaply than Cambodian, the majority of Cambodian suppliers. If that's the world supply price, which notice is below P1, so other countries have a relative cost advantage. If you allow free trade, uh, Cambodian consumers will expand their uh, demand up to Q2. They can now buy rice at a cheaper price from overseas. Cambodian growers will not be able to compete as much at that price, assuming a homogenous product, assuming they're price takers in the market. They'll be able to supply only quantity Q3 at the world supply price. The result is that the volume of imports will be Q3, Q2. In other words, the demand for rice exceeds the uh, ability of domestic Cambodian rice farmers to supply the totality of domestic demand. The volume of imports initially is Q3, Q2. Now, if we now impose a tax, a tariff, indirect tax on imports of rice, the price goes up, depending on the scale of the tariff. Uh, it goes up by that. You can shift the curve up in a parallel way because if the, if the unit price is the same, 10%, 12%, 15%, it'll be uh, the increase in price will be dictated by the size of the tariff. So that, uh, that brown line now shows the world price plus the import tariff. Now, other things being the same, domestic consumers will not consume as much rice because the price is now higher than it was before. 
So demand contracts to Q4. Domestic um, producers are now better able to supply the market. So domestic Cambodian rice farmers will be able to supply up to Q5 now. And the consequence at this high price, the volume of imports now decreases from Q3, Q2 to Q5, Q4. So the tariff in the sense has done its job in reducing or controlling or squeezing the volume of imported rice coming into the market. Tariff revenue that the Cambodian government gets, don't forget many developing nations in particular levy tariffs as a way of, of raising extra revenue for the government. The revenue is the tax per unit, which is the vertical distance between the green and the brown line, multiplied by the volume of imports. So it's the tariff multiplied by Q5, Q4. So that area there, that orange shaded area, is the tariff revenue. And, uh, well, as a, we then start thinking about consumer welfare, what about consumer surplus? Well, consumer surplus will fall because consumers now must pay more for their rice than they did under free trade conditions. Uh, we're going to go through this. What I've done here is I've added lots of letters to various parts of the diagram. Strongly recommend you use letters in the exam rather than shading. Shading comes across as a bit uh, untidy. So consumer surplus before the tariff, well, the quantity bought was Q2. So it's the area underneath the demand curve and above the price. So the consumer surplus was ALG, area ALG. After the tariff, the price goes up. Quantity contracts to Q4. So the consumer surplus is ADF, which means the area of consumer surplus lost is FDLG. So there's a loss of consumer surplus. Producer surplus, that's the revenue surplus to uh, domestic producers. Initially, at the old price, it was GIH because the price was pretty low. The world price, the imported price was low. So Cambodian rice growers had producer surplus of GIH. Now it's gone up, supplies expanded to Q5. Producer surplus is now FEH, which is a gain of GFEI. GFEI. Any doubt on this, go back to our revision lectures on welfare, how you measure consumer and producer surplus. This is important because you want to lift your analysis marks to the highest level you can in A-level. So bring in the concepts of consumer and producer surplus. There's also something called community surplus, which is simply the sum of consumer and producer surplus. So community surplus before the tariff was A-L-I-H-G. Uh, now it is, uh, sorry, yes, it was that. It was indeed that. Now it's ADF plus FEH. So there has been a net loss of welfare. Uh, okay, so net welfare has, has gone down. It's gone down by IEDL. Some of that is tariff revenue going to the government. That's a transfer from consumers paying high prices now to the government. So the area EDKJ is tax revenue to the government. Some of that consumer surplus has now gone to the government. And the key, of course, key valuation point is how does the government use that tax revenue? Is it spent wisely? Is it invested? Or does it go to corrupt officials? Who knows? That's part of the evaluation. But there are deadweight losses of areas IEJ, DKL, Two areas there, two triangles, which are deadweight losses. They're lost welfare, which doesn't go to the producer or the consumer. In a sense, welfare is lost. And it's lost because the output is, uh, there's, a, there's a loss of welfare because the output's been squeezed and it's consumer surplus not transferred to the government or the producer. Okay, so that's welfare. So that's okay. That's the areas of deadweight uh, loss of welfare. Uh, there's your basic analysis. We've been through it step by step. Uh, if you want to take another look at the video, you can go through it one more time. But that kind of diagram there is really quite important in terms of getting the top level of analysis marks for a question on import tariffs. So it's well worth practicing and nailing, smashing this diagram ahead of an exam. In the next video, we'll just work our way gradually do a little summary of the analysis of the effects of a tariff. Okay, thank you.